Hi, welcome to this piano tutorial on the incredibly popular piece Passa Caglia. Let's have a look at the music and see how very simple, accessible and rewarding a piece it is to play. <laughs> So first, a little bit of background. The piece is based on the final movement of the keyboard suite in G minor by George Frederick Handel. This is a fantastic piece to play, um, basically in the form of a theme and variations. I'll link above uh, my performance. This is how the Handel piece sounds. <laughs> piece and arranged it for violin and viola or violin and cello. Have a listen. <laughs> actually a conductor and a violinist. A passacaglia, you may not have encountered that word before, it originates from the 1600s in Spain and it's a piece that is formed around usually a repeating bass line, a ground bass or a bass ostinato. So that's a little bit of background, let's jump ahead to the music, I'll pop the score up for you to follow and I'll mark it as we go. So let's look at the repeating bass line first of all. I'm going to break down the music for you and if you've never played this piece before it really is possible to memorise the whole piece in five minutes. It's very simple. Let's have a listen first of all to the bass line, the kernel of the piece. I'll mark it on the score. Back to A and then it repeats. And this repeats throughout the piece. Let's look at the harmony that goes along with the bass line. A minor, D minor, G major, C major, F major, D minor, E major, back to A minor. Glance through the piece, this repeats and repeats and repeats. Okay, so we have um, two opening bars, introductory A minor bars, and I'm going to break down what left hand does because once you have one bar of left hand, you have the whole piece because the pattern repeats. You begin with a, a, a rising octave, 5 1, and then imagine you're jumping up to make a chord. Have a look at the hand on the keys. You're making an A minor chord, so. That's your position and you're going to do this every time, doesn't matter which bass note it is, so float across, okay, and then we break it, okay, the technique, you're going to use a little bit of rotation, keep your wrist loose, and you're floating like skimming pebbles on the water. Do it nice and slowly and then speed up. We want it legato with no bumps. And then you do the same pattern on D. Octave, move up to the chord. skimming pebbles on a lake or on the water. This is the way you're moving across. And down. On F. On D. On E. 
it's nice to join the octave with five and one, not just jump up. I often see pianists doing it like this or players on YouTube. Much nicer to join the octave and then float up. I'll write the fingering on the score. Okay, so we have left hand. Once you get the pattern on one bass note, you have it for the rest of the piece. And if you skim through the piece, it's the same. It repeats and repeats. Okay, so what we're going to do is now move on to bar three and it's where I call it section A. Okay, and um, it's a pattern. So C rising octave and then with a descending step, going back to the repeating C's at the top. Same pattern on B. Same pattern on A. Different melody. Okay, so let's hear it together. inspired piece we can add some ornaments if we want so would be quite nice a little trill there okay we now get so really it, it works in chunks of eight bars eight bar section the next eight bars starting at bar 11 I call it section B okay so it takes section A and really it reverses it so we have a descending octave and then we move up the steps whilst we go back to C each time. Down a step. Pattern on B. Pattern on A. Melody. Okay, so we hear it with left hand. rotation and as you become accustomed to the notes it's quite nice to bring out or make more important the descending steps okay so the character of the piece it's gentle it's lyrical, it's touching. Melancholic, slightly sad. A touch of G major, so the feeling lightens a little bit. Asking a question. And as the steps rise, the music becomes a little more hopeful. To have the to, to, to play musically, let's listen to the harmonies inside feel the changes the emotional changes hopeful resolving resigned okay so once we've played section a and b eight bars and eight bars we repeat section A and B. I'll put it on the score so you can see. So the first 32 bars, straight away we've learned left hand pattern, right hand pattern, we've reversed right hand pattern, and now we repeat the whole chunk. So you can see what I mean about this being super easy piece to memorize. 
So I'm going to jump ahead to bar 35, which uh, I'm calling section C. In fact, really it's a variation on, on A, but it's a slight change. So let's call it C. Left hand, as I say, the eight bars, repeat. So a good idea would be number one, memorize the bass ostinato, which was the A, D, G, C, F, D, so on. Um, so memorize that, then memorize the harmony by playing it in chords, and third, memorize the left hand pattern, because then you can forget about it. Memorize it so you can play left hand with your eyes closed, then forget about it, and we can just look at right hand. So bar 35, what happens to the pattern? Well, we have an interesting repeated note to start it. A good fingering to use would be 2-1, okay, for your repeat. And then open up to your octave. And now we're gonna do our downward steps whilst going back to C each time. I use that. Two, one, two, one. Okay, so that's a nice fingering to use. And again, two, one, two, and on the repeated note, two, one. Mm. Two, one, two, one. And then on your, your upper notes, depending on the size of your hand, you can use, you can go up to whichever finger is comfortable. Okay, so that's section C. Let's hear it hands together. lovely section going up to high C and we're coming down in broken octaves so we're coming down in steps again which is a feature isn't it of the piece but and so forth so let's have a play and then up to B so down a step from your original starting note of C but now we keep going keep going apart from the last line, because your octaves, your broken octaves on your left hand are going to go into the same territory, the music changes slightly. I'll show you on the score. <clears throat> we share an A. Back to the pattern. So let's listen to the whole of the broken octave section. It's lovely. And then guess what we have? Section A again. Followed by, yep, you guessed it, section B again. <laughs> and then, okay, we'll listen to it, we'll listen. Ostinato in whole notes or semi breeze with, you guessed it, section A with right hand. And now 
definitely have an ornament. Just to give that Baroque feeling. Because the piece repeats so much, don't be afraid to play around with the dynamics. Use the left pedal for a different colour. So for example, uh, when the material is new in section A, the first announcement of it, uh, what you could do when A returns, maybe it's a PP, maybe it's a completely different colour. Or maybe you want to bring out the descending notes in right hand a little more. The most important thing about playing this piece nicely is that you want to feel a forward flow in the music. You don't want to feel any bumps in the, in the road as it were. So really important to master each hand separately, memorize left hand and the sections, as we've said, for right hand, and a gentle flow is what you're aiming for. Um, there are no rights and wrongs as to how to express the piece. Um, it would be lovely to vary the dynamic and express how you feel each section means. It's an absolutely gorgeous piece to play. Um, a lovely tribute from Hal Warson to Handel. Uh, let me know in the comments how you've got on with it, if you've any questions, or if you're having any trouble with any areas. Next, it would be a fantastic idea to watch the actual video of the Handel original piece, the original Casa Caglia. And so I'll link that here. I'll also link my performance, which is fully overhead, so you can see the fingering I've talked about of the Halvors and Casa Caglia. So I hope you enjoy both of those, and I hope this has been helpful, and enjoy playing it. Let me know how you get on, and see you next time. Bye!